Hi there, welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name is Jane. Now in today's video, it's all about uh, my new cover stitch machine that was delivered earlier this week and I promised I would share it with you. But I've also got another little surprise off my husband, bless him. And also I'm going to show you my tabletop ironing board and other little bits of tools that I use that you might find interesting or useful. <music> First things first, I'll show you my ironing board, my little tabletop ironing board. I mean, if you've already got one, then obviously it's not rocket science, but some people might not have one on, not even think of making one. I've made this ages ago and I've had it for oh, years. And um, all it is, is some MDF that I got cut at my local B&Q, or just your local DIY store. And it's nine millimeters thick nine mil MDF and my measures approximately 22 inches long by, I wrote it down, by 16 inches wide and it's just big enough, you know, when you're ironing little um, little bits and bobs, it's not, it's not big enough to iron clothes on, um, but it's ideal for when you're sewing and you need to press seams or you need to press a collar or do some bias binding. It's absolutely perfect size and obviously it just sits on your workbench. So this has got pink gingham on it and it just needs time for a refresh. And I'll show you the back of it. So there's obviously the MDF and the, the first layer, it's got a few layers because it's been covered a few times. Obviously the more you layer it and the more you cover it, the thicker it gets and better ironing surface it is. Uh, but this one here is like um, an old ironing board cover that I was going to throw out, but I kept because it's, still, it's got the ironing board, you know, the wadding that comes on an ironing board cover. So I cut, cut that up and put that down as my first layer. Um, and you can also add wadding uh, a layer of nice thick wadding and then put your fabric on top so I've obviously got my iron board cover and then I covered it with some green gingham which is really old and then I covered it again with some nice uh, thick fabric and then I covered it again with pink gingham and I'm going to cover it again with this pretty Clark and Clark this is Fifi and I've got loads left, so if you want any of the Fifi, I've got quite a bit left. I'll show you what I've got left on the bale. I've got quite a bit left on the bale, and you can get this over on, on Instagram, Loopy Mabel Fabric, but I'll put the link for it in the box below. And I'm selling all my fabrics off at reduced price. So this is normally £17 a metre, and I'm selling the Clark & Clark at £3 a metre, so it's an absolute steal. So if you wanted some of this fabric, I've probably got about five or six metres left on that anyway so i've chose i've chose this fabric because it's really pretty and i like to have a little pretty fabric and i'm just going to keep it it's it's obviously half a meter probably um, i'm just going to keep it doubled up and then if it gets a bit soiled i can unstaple it and turn it over so i'm just going to leave it as one piece and obviously the more layers the thicker it is and all i'm using is my heavy duty staple gun and it's really simple. So you've got your, you get your board, nine millimeter thick is a nice thickness. Put some wadding on, pick your fabrics, um, and obviously you just need to staple it and you need it nice and tight. So I normally start at one point, I try not to hit my previous staples and just make it top that side. And again, I'll pull it over the opposite side and I'll pull it really tight, as tight as I can and staple that down and then turn it round and then I'll pull it as tight as I can on this side and again on this side and then I'm just going to work all my way around and just probably tuck in my corner but you get the gist because obviously I'm going through quite a few layers, see if I can get it through again. Well, and then you just staple, pulling it tight. 
all the way around. See if I can get this corner. I may have to trim. Unless I can get it on there. See if I can get it. It's probably not going to work. But anyway, you staple it all the way around. And I like to keep my corners nice and neat if I can. Just make it like a little envelope corner. And then just go around a few more staples. So it's secure. And then turn it over and I've got a lovely desktop ironing board. So that's all I use. And it's really easy and because it's flat and it's fairly light, when you're not using it, you just put it down the side, side of a unit or put it away somewhere. And it's much less hassle than getting an ironing board out all the time. Perfect for your sewing. So your moving on to my to iron something. New so there's my iron board machine, cover. I told you and about that'll before. probably last me oh, probably a good year before it needs covering again. And that's how I do mine. So moving on to my some of my favourite tools. I just thought I'd share them with you. It's sometimes nice to know what other people use, isn't it? Um, apart from the normal um, sew machine foot that I have on my brother. I also like to use the G foot, and I think this is classed as an overcast um, foot, I believe. It's got a little lip there. I don't use it for where it's designed to, to be used for, but sometimes when I want to do some edging and I want to keep my stitching really straight, and I put my fabric against the edge of this lip, and obviously make sure that my needle is set to the left position, otherwise it would hit hit that little bar in the middle, and um, which I've done that a few times. And then I just use that to guide the fabric. So just for example, there's a little bit of my scrap fabric. And then I will just put my fabric so it sits literally against that lip and just hold my fabric against that and it really does give you a lovely straight edge so that's G foot and it's one of the snap-on the snap-on feet and this other one is the quarter inch foot which is mainly designed for when you're doing your patchwork and you need to keep your quarter inch seam allowance but some patterns that I've got come across have asked for a quarter inch seam allowance so rather than me having to work out which is quarter of an inch just stick this foot on and I just use that as my guide so I use that quite a lot as well. So they're the two of the two of the most popular feet that I use. And then I I don't really recognise these these hope Ikea is not watching but you know if you go to Ikea you can pick up the free paper tape measures when you're going around the store to measure well I always every time I go to Ikea which isn't very often maybe a couple of times a year three four times a year maximum if that and I always pick up a little uh, wadge of these tapes and bring them back home because I use them on my cutting table just show you on my cutting table here and I just obviously they're just paper I just obviously I've got the measurements already on my cutting mat but sometimes I just need a this these are all in inches sometimes just like centimeters so I just pop a centimeter down stick it on with a bit of cellar tape and when it starts to rip like it is a little bit now here and you can see it's starting to rip a little bit here so once that rips I just tear it off and just put another one of these down and obviously the free so if, if you're lucky enough you've got a cutting station that's designated for you and you know you're not working from obviously a dining table or a kitchen table you probably won't be able to do that but if you've got a de designated sewing cutting table then these are ideal stick one down and the, the, I mean they do have inches on 
just inches or centimetres, so whichever you prefer to work to. But as I've got inches on my mat, I put the centimetre side down and I just refer to that as well. Sometimes I need it. So hope IKEA is not watching, but I, I am using them. So it's not like I'm not using them. I'm just not using them in IKEA shop. So there's a little uh, hint and tip. And my pens, I like to use these. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what the name of these are, but the, the heat heat erasable pens so they come in with like just like it looks like a normal ballpoint pen uh, with a gel um, fill and you've got the refills there and you can pick your colours and this obviously these are the three colours that I've got I think it comes with a white one as well and you just obviously use it to mark your markings of your patterns and what have you on your fabric and then as soon as you go over with the iron it just completely disappears and they last quite a while and then all you do is just unscrew the cap and just change change and put your new refill in and you can get them all on I think I got all mine on Amazon I'm not sure what the the make of these are um, if I find out what uh, where I got mine from I'll put the link for them in the box below if you um, never seen or used them before they're really good the only downside is obviously if you put your markings on your fabrics and then you maybe have to go and press something and you haven't finished with that mark and you just have to be careful because if you catch your iron and go over that marking then it'll disappear so then you have to go back out and get your pattern out and put your markings back in that's the only downside but they are really good <clears throat> and I also use these friction friction pens as well they're pretty good too and they wash out I think they iron out as well so I use them too. So those are the pens I use. And I like to use a couple of tools I like to use. I think I've mentioned this one before, but when I'm doing my um, tracing out of patterns, I hate tracing patterns out, but sometimes it's unavoidable. That's why I prefer the PDF downloadable patterns, but sometimes it's unavoidable if you get the paper pattern. This is the, the Clover tracing wheel with the seam allowance guides. So you just pick your you see them allowance and they've got like little sections obviously they come in measurements and you choose you keep one wheel obviously in that left hand side and then these wheels just pull out and then if you have got a pattern that hasn't got the seam allowance you need to transfer a seam allowance onto your tracing paper rather than getting your ruler out and what have you you just pop in whichever the designated hole is for whatever the seam allowance is say it's a centimeter seam allowance so you would pop it in that one there and then you'd have your tracing paper underneath and then you would keep that wheel on the pattern line and that wheel would obviously work at the same time and it would transfer from your pattern and obviously your tracing ink your carbon paper that's underneath and it would then transfer your seam allowance so it's a good little tool i use it all the time well not use it all the time slight exaggeration i use it whenever i have to put seam allowances in any patterns that don't have them the last time I used it was for my Victoria blouse that I did for my Saw the Look because that didn't come with the seam allowances. So it's a really useful tool. And another one of my wheels is this one that's got more of a, you can get different types of wheels. Some you can get the blunt wheels. I'll show you my wheels. You can get different types of wheels. That is just the blunt, blunt wheel, which you use for your carbon paper. And you can obviously go over and it just puts, transfers the line for you. That's um, another one with softer curved edges. I don't really use that one as much, but that I do use this one because this one's got the more pointier teeth. You can see, as opposed to that one, which is a softer, softer teeth. And this is, you know, when you need to shorten a pattern and you don't want to cut it up or you don't want to fold it over, you just put your pattern piece down and you would then roll through your pattern. So for example, on this pattern piece, if Jodie just gets out the way, um, you know, you just say, for example, you've got your, your pattern and you don't, and you need maybe that size and you don't want to cut your pattern or fold it over. So obviously put your pattern piece down on your fabric and say you want it that size. And all you need to do is obviously with your normal rotary cutter, you would obviously rotary cut around your fabric. And then when you come to the size that you want, you would go over with this one with the pointy teeth. Jodie, move out the way with your pointy teeth and that would score through the pattern. Jodie, move out the way. People can't see with your 
fur bomb in the way. So you then score through the line, which then obviously doesn't damage the pattern, but then it would leave a fine score mark on your fabric, which you would then cut out. So that's really good. I like that tool a lot. And then obviously I like my notcher. Georgie, come on, this isn't funny anymore. Um, my pattern notcher, which obviously does as it says on the tin, cuts the notches out on your patterns. I love this. And sometimes I use it to cut through the pattern and the fabric and just notch them all out in one go. Depends on what fabric you're using. Sometimes it doesn't. It just obviously it's designed for paper and card, um, not so much fabric, but it does work um, if I'm being lazy. But I use that for put, definitely cutting the notches out of my patterns, and I love that. I love that tool. And then last but not least, I use pattern weights. Now these beautiful, delicious pattern weights are from Foxglove and Field. You've probably heard of them. I won this little um, set from a competition that was on Instagram. It was me and Helen. She also has a YouTube channel called Stitch Rip Repeat. I'll put the link for Helen's YouTube channel in the box below as well. And we both won a set each. And it, it comes with this, these gorgeous set of Liberty print pattern weights. And then also with this like pin cushion. And it's magnetic really really strong magnet um so i use them because obviously i won them and i also use good old-fashioned washers that i got from b q and they're really cheap get them from b q or any hardware store the great big massive metal washers and you can get them in different weights really good for holding your patterns down and then also I use these pattern weights, which are a decent weight, and these were from Pattern Weights. And I'll also put the link for that company as well in the box below. And they designed, added my design for me. And then I've got some old fashioned vintage sewing emblems on the back and my logo on the front. So I use them as well. So I, I've got plenty of pattern weights to use and I just keep them in this little box on the side of my desk and I just use whatever comes to hand. They are my main tools along with my rotary cutter. I have two rotary cutters actually. This one with the ergonomic handle, that is for the fabric, fabric only. And this one without the ergonomic handle is for paper. So I use this for cutting out my paper patterns. And cause, the, and cause they're different, I know that's paper and that's fabric only so I don't get them mixed up. And when the blade gets blunt on my fabric one, I then transfer it to the paper one because you don't need as much a sharper blade for paper. And that's what I use as well. So they're my tools. So now let's go over to my um, cover stitch and I'll show you all about that and my little second surprise. So back to my sewing station. And if you remember my vlog, I put the link for it up there where I said I had sold a lot of my wool because I sell quite a lot of wool over on Loopy Mabel Crochet and um, I've sold a massive amount of wool in the last 10 days. I mean ridiculous amount of wool, 50, 60 orders um, nearly every day. I sold all my wool, there's very little left. Normally I would sell it over months and months and months, just a steady stream. Uh, but I think because everybody's in self-isolation and lockdown, I think they must be knitting and crocheting and ordering online more. So I've made a, a, quite a lot of money and I normally I would plow that money back in to restock my wool, but because I won't be restocking it for some time and got a big chunk of money, I thought, right, I'm gonna invest it. And I've always wanted a cover stitch. Now I don't need a cover stitch. It's not a vital piece of equipment to do dressmaking because I can get away with doing that lovely uh, finishing that you can get with a twin needle over on my brother machine but I've always wanted a cover stitch. So I thought, well, now's my opportunity. I've got some money that I would normally have that I can invest because it's going to be an investment and it is an investment in the cover stitch. And I've always wanted a baby lock. So John said, because he always does, if I mentioned anything to him, oh, I wouldn't mind this or I wouldn't mind that, he'd go, he straight away, he'd go, go and get it then. If you want it, you need it, go and get it, treat yourself. Anyway, so I thought, right, 
I'm going to get the cover stitch, the baby lock cover stitch, and here it is. I've got the light switched on. I haven't um, stitched with it yet on any of my garments because obviously I only got it the other day and I've been practicing on it. But it's amazing. Um, it's got this jet air system. So you just press a button and it's it just threads, it threads it for you. I'll show you. Um, obviously, I haven't really done an awful lot on it. Um, but it's got the, the usual setup along the top. And it's got comes with three needles. And you can obviously choose to keep the three needles in, or you can choose to have the two needles and then you can set the width as well of the the cover stitch width type of thing so you can have it on wide you could have three needles or two needles narrow or two needles and wide well I haven't really experimented with it yet so it's just slightly different obviously because I've never had a cover stitch before so it's slightly different it's nothing like an overlocker where you can just stitch from nothing and just stitch on the fabric you have to actually physically have your fabric on the underneath the feet so I've got a little bit of some scrap fabric here so I'll just show you what I mean normally with a uh, overlocker you just put your fabric in not whiz along but this you have to place your fabric underneath the foot and then put the foot down and then you've got to uh, obviously put your needles down and then, fingers crossed, I don't know which, I've got two feet going on under here, so I don't know which foot, which is the right foot. Oh, that's the right foot. I've got it on the two needle. Uh, but there's on the two needle, and I think I've got mine set to the narrow, cover stitch setting and when you turn it over you get that kind of overlocked chain stitch effect on the back so I haven't done it, I haven't made anything with it yet um, so I need to really read up on the manual a little bit more but I can't wait to get going on um, my next jersey make my next t-shirt make maybe or vest maybe but my little surprise was when it arrived the other day and the courier brought it in the box. Two boxes arrived and, I, and I, anyway, I signed. Well, I didn't sign because we don't sign anything at the minute while we've got this lockdown, but digitally signed from a distance uh, for the two boxes. And I thought, what's the second box? So my second, my little surprise that I mentioned in my intro is this little beauty. I shall bring it into focus. And I'll bring it into focus so you can see. the Inspire Baby Lock Machine. Now, how have I got that, you ask? Well, so my lovely husband, John, who is always spoils me. So I said that, well, I wouldn't mind eventually saving up to get the Baby Lock to match with the cover stitch. I've already got an overlocker, the Brother 4234D, which is not even two years old. So what he did was, he, similar to what he did at Christmas, where he went um, and got me lots of sewing essentials and notions via our daughter Sophie, because he, he doesn't know how to do it anymore. So he told Sophie and then Sophie had like picked my brain secretly and got me lots of little sewing things for Christmas. But he did exactly the same with this. He knew um, that I wanted a matching baby lock machine. He had overlocker machine uh, that's all he knew and he knew with the company that I'd got it from so what he'd done was he said to Sophie go on the com go on the computer and go onto the website where your mum's just got the cover stitch machine and find her an overlocker to match and that's what she did and she ordered it on behalf of John so bless him he'd ordered that to get delivered at the same time as my cover stitch via Sophie. She did it all. She uh, wasn't sure which one I want, which one it was I wanted. So she rang the company up and said, which one is the best to get for my mum and can you deliver it alongside the cover stitch that she's just ordered? And they suggested the Inspire. 
and delivered it with this one and I had no idea so how spoilt am I and I said to John I mean that's I mean that 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 was expensive and that's equally expensive for an overlocker um, and I just said to John why did you get me that and he says oh well you said you, you wouldn't mind one to match you know the baby lock to match this and you deserve it looking after me for 20 you know 24 seven days a week 24 7 and I just wanted to treat you so he ordered me that via Sophie so I'm a really really lucky girl really spoiled um, overwhelmed um, they're absolutely amazing because the thread themselves through this airlock system I'll show you if I know how to do it um, you obviously thread it through and there's two little holes there and you pop the thread in the hole and you press uh, I think it's that button I'm not sure which button it is because obviously I haven't uh, been on it really much yet and it threads the, the lower loopers through this jet air system absolutely brilliant so I am now the proud owner of a baby lock inspire and the baby lock cover stitch and I'm totally and utterly in love with them both obviously they're going to last me forever I will look after them and they're going to obviously get used I will use them I love my dressmaking addicted to my sewing so they won't be getting they won't be getting dusty anytime soon so that was my little surprise i said to john well that that was really really generous um so that that will count as my birthday present and my christmas present and maybe our wedding anniversary present next year so don't buy me anything this year uh, because this will will cover for you know birthdays and christmas so I just thought I would share with you my new machines and how lucky and spoiled am I. And I'll keep you posted on how I get on with them because obviously I haven't stitched anything with them yet apart from practicing on scrap fabrics. So I hope you liked today's vlog. Thumbs up if you did and hit the subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I shall see you on my next sewing vlog. Take care for now. Bye.